Hey guys, in this video, I wanna show you how to install Handbrake into your Open Media Vault home server or really any Docker-based uh, server solution here. So uh, if we take a look at Handbrake, you can see that it is, uh, it's a tool for converting videos from basically one format to another uh, and Handbrake uses more modern codecs. So let's say you've got an older video file, you wanna use a uh, H264, H265, uh, Handbrake will let you convert those codecs over to a newer version for easier playback. Now, the one thing I do wanna say here is that this will only work on 64-bit systems or x86 slash 64 systems, meaning there's a really good chance this won't work on a Raspberry Pi setup. So I just wanted to get that out there uh, just so that everybody's aware that this probably will not work uh, if you're doing this on a Raspberry Pi. So when I started doing some research on this, I was digging around on Docker and I ran across this JLE Sage slash handbrake. Uh, it was updated fairly recently and uh, he's got a pretty good setup here. The problem is that it's just a Docker command, uh, something you would run in an SSH, uh, like a putty program or something like that. So I've gone ahead and converted that over to uh, a stack, a version two stack, so that we can run it in Portainer. So uh, let's go ahead and jump over to Portainer and take a look at that. Okay, so here we are in my Portainer uh, setup here. Let's go over here to Stacks, um, and we'll just click on Add a Stack. That guy goes by every morning just so loud at like a quarter to seven in the morning. It's so frustrating. Anywho, uh, let's take a look at the this uh, stack that I put together here. Uh, basically, like I said, it's version two, service is Handbrake, image is JLE, JLE Sage, uh, container name is Handbrake, ports 5800. Uh, I have tried this on other ports. Uh, it doesn't work so well, even on the external port being changed. Uh, just something about the way this guy wrote things up only seems to really work on port 5800. Uh, so we will wanna make sure that we leave that alone. Um, so we've got uh, four different volumes here that we need to take a look at. Uh, this is actually gonna be where the configuration file goes. We should already have that folder uh, set up if you followed my other videos. Uh, so if we go over here to Open Media Vault uh, and we, then we take a look at shared folders. Uh, in here, we should see uh, a configuration folder and in that we can um, actually put a subfolder in there for Handbrake. So uh, let's go ahead and do that actually. So <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go back to Portainer and I'm just gonna replace the first half of this. Actually, I'll just do it there. And I'll give that a capital H just for the sake of consistency there. So now we've got three other folders here and we're actually gonna have to create these um, in, uh, in, sorry, in uh, Open Media Vault here. So what we're gonna need is a storage folder, a watch folder, and an output folder. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create three folders here. I'm gonna call it, um, I'm gonna say uh, HB for handbrake, and I'm gonna call this storage. I'll go ahead and select my device, um, put it there. I'm gonna make sure that everybody has read and write privileges and I'll say save. Uh, now, so we've done storage, so let's do uh, HB uh, watch. And uh, again, we'll go ahead and select our drive like so and then we can click save. And I believe the last one that I need is output. Uh, so I'll go ahead and click add one more time. I'll say HB output and I'll select my drive and everybody gets privileges. I'll click save. So now we've got those three folders created. So now what we need to do is come over here to uh, SMB CIFS and actually make those available on the network. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just go ahead and select here, only guests and save. I'm gonna do the same thing for storage and only guests and save. And one last time for the watch folder. And then once that's done, we can go up here and click apply. Okay, so now that we have those uh, three folders shared, what we actually wanna do is come back here to shared folders. Uh, and we've got our first, uh, our config folder is shared there. So next, let's take a look at the storage. All we need is this absolute path for storage. So we can right click, go to inspect, double click and copy. And then we can just come right into here, paste that in like so. And we're gonna do the same thing for watch and output. Uh, so we'll right click, go to inspect, double click, copy. Go ahead and paste that in there. And one more. Right, let me see, watch, I need output. 
Uh, so let's go up here to output, inspect, copy. We'll go ahead and paste that right in there like so. Okay, so now that we've got all of this modified, we're good to go. Um, everything here is uh, set up the way it needs to be set up. Uh, so now we should be able to scroll down. Oops, actually we've got to give it a name. Uh, let's do that first. Now we can click on deploy the stack. Okay, so now that it has deployed, so let's go over here and find it. We'll open this up. We'll go over here to logs. And um, let's, uh, that should actually be good to go there. Now there's one thing I forgot to mention here, unfortunately. Uh, I can't seem to get this to work in uh, Chrome uh, for, for whatever reason. Let's go ahead and paste that in there. Go to 5800. And right here, uh, server disconnected. But uh, if I come down here and I open up Firefox, there we go. Let's drag that up there. And if I paste that in and go, hey, there we go. So uh, maybe I should have given that warning a little sooner, but uh, unfortunately this will not work with Chrome. Maybe it's a setting I've got in my Chrome. I, I don't know, but it works with Firefox just straight out of the box. Um, so that's a good way to get started here. Uh, so basically at this point, you can start going in here and setting up uh, what your uh, preset preferences are. Uh, you can configure this however you'd like to configure it. Uh, but what I want to do here is actually um, minimize a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, actually, we're going to leave that one open. Actually, we can bring that down there. <clears throat> so what I want to do is um, actually open up a watch folder and um, an output folder. So uh, we'll say out or HB watch. We'll go ahead and do that. Currently, there's nothing in there. That's good. That's what we want to see there. I'm going to bring this up kind of uh, like so. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Oops. Like so. But I'm going to make this uh, HB output instead. And I'm going to drag this down here. Like so. And then uh, I've just got uh, some files here from previous videos that I've recorded. So uh, let's just grab those three real quick. We'll drag that into the watch. And uh, then we'll, we'll get this out of the way. And here in just a moment, uh, we should see, um, there we go. So it is encoding already. Uh, we'll give it just a second to go through that file. And then we should start seeing these get output into the output folder. Okay, so just like that, those three files are converted. And if we take a look uh, at, well, let's, uh, Let's sort them by title there. So we can see that the first file up here is 24 megs. Uh, when that is compressed down, uh, it, it is uh, just over five megs. Uh, same thing, we went from 18 to three and from six to two. Um, so if we actually take a look, I'm gonna turn my volume down there. Uh, they actually look pretty good. Now, again, this was just the preset. This was just uh, set up for, uh, I think, uh, general fast 1080p 30. Uh, if you wanted to, you could go over here to web, uh, for instance, and go to like uh, YouTube 1080p 60. Uh, you could and use that as a preset, or you can go through here and really configure uh, your presets to, to be basically whatever you want them to be. Um, so there's a lot of options in here, but I wanted to do, to do just a quick demonstration uh, showing how to get it set up and show that it works. And it actually works really, really well very quickly. Okay guys, so that's how to set up Handbrake on your Open Media Bolt slash uh, whatever Docker uh, home server or server in general, I suppose. Uh, fairly simple process. Uh, again, um, the, the original uh, Docker command I had to convert into a stack. Uh, you could just run it as a Docker command if you wanted to, but um, I'm a big fan of stacks. It's just easier to uh, to save those for later. So um, so anyway, there's uh, how to set this up with stacks. I will have a link uh, in the description over to my website where the full stack will be available, uh, along with any other instructions that, that may come up or need to change or whatever. So if you're interested in doing this for your own server, definitely jump down to the link in the description and check out the, uh, the information on my website over there. Uh, I've I think that pretty much wraps everything up. Um, I, again, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons for helping me uh, uh, keep the channel going forward. I really do appreciate you guys. Uh, if you want to become a patron, there will be a link in the description to jump over to my Patreon page uh, where there are several or a few, not several, a few uh, different uh, tiers that you can join. Um, and the, at the five dollar tier, you actually get access to a members only Discord server. So if you're interested in that, uh, definitely check that out. I've got a, a, a coffee tip jar down there as well. If you want to support the channel that way as well. 
And I think, I think that pretty much wraps everything up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.